Well, our special coverage of Himalayan Echoes 2024 continues. Uh, and joining us now is a uh, well-known author and former diplomat, Vikas Farooq. Uh, Vikas Ji, uh, welcome. Thank you for speaking with us. Uh, thank you so much for having me uh, on your program. Yes. How was the experience at Himalayan Echoes? How did your session go in Anita? Uh, this was my first time at the Himalayan Echoes Festival, uh, and it was just a wonderful experience. First of all, the setting is so picturesque. I don't think any other literary festival can match the beauty and majesty of the Himalayas. I think Bhutan comes a little close, but uh, you know, Nainital is uh, in a class of its own altogether. I was returning to Nainital after many decades uh, and it was uh, good to get reacquainted with this part of the world. You know, Kumau has its own history, its own heritage, its own culture. And I think the people of this region, you know, have their own customs and traditions as well. So it's good that this festival not only uh, gets writers from all across the country, uh, it also brings together the local talent, you know, and that's very important because you have to be true to your roots. So my session was wonderful. I was in conversation conversation with Amreen Khan and I think she brought the best out of me in terms of my diplomatic journey as well as my writer's journey. Yes. Uh, as you said, the most picturesque, pretty setting as well. Uh, you know, but I have to ask you another interesting question because uh, we've seen, uh, you know, uh, speakers this time from Bhutan, also from Nepal. Now, you've been a diplomat yourself. Uh, this is clearly bridging uh, nations together as well. You know, mountainous regions, of course, but bringing in them together through a soft power like this. Yes, absolutely. I think that's why it's called Himalayan Echoes, because it brings together... In fact, you see the entire Himalayan region is one region. It may be subdivided into different countries, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, the mountains are the same, uh, whether you view them from this part or, or that part. So it was good to see uh, this Bhutanese, lovely Bhutanese musical troupe with this small girl uh, performing. It was good to see Sanjeev Shakya and others from Nepal coming in. So I think, in a way, you know, this organic connection uh, that brings together the mountain people, so to speak, you know, because they breathe a different air. I think their DNA is slightly different. Their food habits are, are slightly different. So it's good to that, you know, that we are connecting not just people within India, but we are also connecting people of the entire Himalayan belt, right from Bhutan uh, all the way to uh, Nepal. So it, it was really wonderful to, to see this happening. Now, you're, of course, most famously known as the author of Q&A, uh, but you have written other books after that, of course. Tell us about the most recent book of yours. So this latest book, it's called The Girl with the Seven Lives. It's coming out after a gap of 11 years. My last book was called The Accidental Apprentice, mainly because, as you know, I was a diplomat and you interacted with me when I was the official spokesperson and then I was High Commissioner to Canada. There was just no time, you know, I was so busy in my day job that there was no time to create. Uh, I retired from the Foreign Service three years ago and that's what gave me the time and the space to bring out this new book. I really call it Arabian Nights meets Slumdog Millionaire. So it has the same uh, frenetic uh, energy of Slumdog Millionaire, uh, same kind of a narrative structure and yet it's narrated over the course of a single night uh, and it's really it's about resilience and reinvention how my protagonist a 25 year old Indian woman called De uh, Devi undergoes various uh, metamorphoses and transforms herself virtually every three years uh, and I think it's a story that readers uh, I hope will relate to. Okay. Uh, we have seen your creations become Slumdog Millionaire uh, on the big screen and also the great Indian murder on OTT uh, this one also? Well, yes, as we speak, uh, six or seven different uh, <laughs> producers are chasing me for the film rights uh, and I'm evaluating the offers at the moment. What is heartening is that there is uh, also interest even from the Western world, even though the book has not yet been published abroad. It's only been published in the Indian subcontinent. But I, th I think it tells you that if a story is good, uh, if a story is the themes of a story are <laughs> universal, then they would resonate with uh, you know, any community and any culture. So I'm uh, very excited about this and let's see where the destiny of this book leads to. Okay. My final question to you then. Uh, because as you said, you were so busy with your day job earlier, but you did find uh, less time, but some time at least for your previous uh, novels. Uh, what was the first trigger in you that made you turn author in the first place? So the first trigger, I think, was my posting in London. I was posted in London between 2000 and 2003. And that's when I discovered that some of my contemporaries in the Foreign Service, uh, like Ambassador Navdeet Sarna, Ambassador T.S. Tirumurthy, they were try, you know, trying their hand at fiction. And that's acted as a motivation to me, as an inspiration to me, that do I also have a story inside me? The second inspiration was the city of London itself, because it's such a hub for the world of English language publishing. So I thought to myself, if I have to write something, I better write it in London, because all the agents and all the publishers are here. So I think it was these twin uh, you know, inspiration points that really sparked off my career as a writer and that's why I always call myself an accidental writer. Thank you very much for being with us today. You're an accidental writer but you're a very good one. So we hope you'll continue this journey. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. I do certainly hope that the next book will not take 11 years. Yes. With journalist Dinesh Thakur, Udaya Pratap Singh in Nainital for NewsX. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.